Hello and welcome to the Shroud of the Avatar R12 How-To Guide. In this video, I'm going to take you through the various controls and interfaces of the game to get you up to speed as quickly as possible. Keep in mind that this is pre-alpha code, so nothing's set in stone and things will most certainly change. There's a lot to cover, so let's get started. We'll begin with basic character movement. The W, A, S, and D keys move your character. Moving the mouse while pressing and holding the right mouse button controls the camera position, allowing you to rotate your view. The mouse scroll wheel controls zoom level, allowing you to go from third person to first. Double clicking A, S, or D while in combat, which we'll talk about later, allows you to perform an evasive role in the corresponding direction. Key assignments can be viewed by selecting the gear icon, followed by the controls tab. To talk to an NPC, double left click on it with your mouse. This will bring up the dialogue window. You can ask an NPC his job, name, and other pertinent information that they may reveal during the course of your conversation to reveal quests and game lore. Hitting the Enter key will also bring up the dialogue window, allowing you to converse with other players local to your character, privately across the game world, or exclusively to party members. The chat window can be closed by hitting the Escape key. Finally, hitting the O key reveals a clickable list of available emotes. Pressing the J key allows you to open up your journal. Important conversations you have with NPCs are automatically recorded for you here, allowing you to review important quest plots at any time. Experience can be obtained by killing various creatures found throughout New Britannia and by completing certain quests. In the future, you'll be able to accumulate experience by crafting items and harvesting resources as well. Once you've accumulated enough experience points, your character will go up in level. Levels are mile markers that signify your character's growth. To signify this growth, your character is allotted skill points, which can be used to unlock skills and abilities, increasing your prowess on the battlefield and mastery with magic. To view your current experience point total, hit the C key to open up your character's paper doll. Your character's level is also displayed here. Optionally, you can drag your mouse to the bottom of the screen. Hitting the K key will show you your available skill points, along with the various skill trees. The Adventuring tab lists combat and magic-related skills, while the Crafting tab lists gathering, refining, and production-related skills. Although players can craft items in the current build, the crafting skills have not been implemented yet, so we'll ignore that tab for now. Character classes do not exist in Shroud of the Avatar, Instead, your character's specialization is defined by how you allocate the skill points you receive, allowing for the creation of a much wider and varied range of character customization options. To spend skill points, you'll have to find a trainer. One can be found in all major cities and towns, such as Owl's Head, Kingsport, Arteris, and Braemar. Left-clicking adds a skill to your deck, while right-clicking removes it. Each level increase makes an additional card available to your combat deck, allowing you to increase the chance that it is drawn during any given encounter. This is important for dynamic and hybrid decks, which I'll talk about later. Also, glyphs are color-coded to help you understand the nature of their powers, with red glyphs indicating offensive skills, blue defensive, and gray passive. Active skills are those that you will use to customize the various combat decks you make. Passive, or innate skills, are always on and increase things like your character's strength, intelligence, damage with certain weapons, or defensive bonuses with certain armor types. These skills are always in effect and don't need to be added to a deck, which you will learn more about later when we talk about deck building. Keep in mind, Allocating and reallocating skills costs a nominal fee, the amount indicated at the bottom left of each glyph. 
Your character's health is indicated by the red bar that appears under his or her name on the top left of the screen. Health can be regained through spells, potions, or engaging in non-combat activities. The blue bar indicates his or her focus. Focus is the amount of energy your character has to exert himself. Jumping, fighting, and spellcasting deplete your focus. When focus reaches zero, you are temporarily unable to perform the aforementioned acts. Focus regenerates over time, slowly during combat, faster when out of combat, and even faster through spells and potions. Death occurs when your health reaches a zero. But don't worry, you'll respawn in about 60 seconds. In the meantime, your body will take on the form of an apparition, where you can slowly scout the surrounding area. When you do respawn, you return in a temporarily weakened state. You will also have a temporary penalty to strength, dexterity, and intelligence. Remember, exiting combat mode will replenish your health and focus faster. Shroud of the Avatar uses a dynamic and highly customizable deck-based combat system that allows players to adjust the way they engage in battle based on their personal preferences and or the nature of the encounter. By default, players are provided with a preset starter deck that can be used right away. Pressing the Y key brings up the deck manager interface where decks can be created and managed. There are three types of decks you can create, a standard deck, a dynamic deck, and a hybrid deck. A standard deck is the kind you most typically see in modern MMOs. It contains a set number of slots with a skill or ability tied to each. During combat, the player selects the glyph corresponding to the maneuver he would like to execute. Once the move is executed and the cooldown timer expires, a new combat move can be performed. This is the simplest, most familiar type of deck to construct and is good for those who prefer skills positioned at assigned locations. Keep in mind skills executed as part of a standard deck configuration use twice as much focus. A dynamic deck consists of multiple glyphs that are dealt at random to the available empty slots in the player's combat bar. The frequency at which glyphs appear, the speed in which they are dealt, and the duration for which they stay is all controlled by innate focus skills that player has chosen. This deck system allows the player access to a much broader array of available skills during combat at the expense of having any skill immediately available at any one time. Players control the composition and richness of their decks by dragging skills they have learned into the deck. The more glyphs of a particular type, the more frequently it will be drawn. Additionally, Dynamic decks allow for the creation of powerful combos that can be made when glyphs of a specific type appear in a player's combat bar and are dragged together. Despite their power, dynamic decks are susceptible to slugs, which are useless cards that are randomly dealt to your hand and clog up your deck, making it perform sluggishly. Deck size, armor, and certain types of magic contribute to the number of slugs in your deck with heavier armor and spells from more powerful schools of magic contributing the most. You can see how many slugs a particular deck has in the deck manager. Hybrid decks are a combination of the standard deck and dynamic deck, in which some slots are locked and others are left unlocked and thus dealt to at random. This system gives players the most control and allows you to lock one or more skills you always want to have at the ready, like a heal spell, while at the same time giving you access to combos and the wide range of combat options available to dynamic decks. Pressing the Z key toggles combat mode. Once engaged, combat glyphs are displayed in the combat bar below. Selecting a glyph performs its corresponding function. A secondary or alternate combat deck can be assigned via the deck manager interface. Pressing the X key allows you to hot-swap decks, switching from ranged to melee weapons, for example. Note, there's a 50% focus penalty if decks are switched while in combat. All items found in New Britannia are derived and crafted from real resources found throughout the game world. These materials can be harvested from the various plants, animals, and monsters that exist in various quantities of abundance throughout the land. 
To harvest items, a player needs to use the appropriate tool on its corresponding resource node. For instance, to chop wood, a player must have an axe and double-click a tree. Like all resource gathering tools, the axe does not have to be equipped. Simply having one in your inventory is sufficient and will allow you to interact with the corresponding node. Alternatively, resources can be purchased from merchants or other players. Once you have obtained all the raw materials required to build something, you will need the corresponding crafting tool, crafting table, and recipe. These items can be purchased from merchants. Public crafting pavilions can be found in the town of Owlshead and city of Arteris. There are 10 different types of crafting stations that can be used to create a wide variety of items. To craft an item, double-click the appropriate crafting station. This will open up the crafting window, your inventory, and crafting journal. Placing the right quantity and combination of materials on the correct crafting station, along with the appropriate tool, will allow you to craft the corresponding item. To get you started, some starter crafting recipes have been added to your crafting journal, which can be accessed by pressing the B key. Double-clicking an entry will place the requisite material and tools on the table, assuming they exist in your inventory. As you experiment and discover new recipes, they will automatically be added to your crafting journal. Items like armor and weapons become worn with use. The more worn, the less effective they become. You can see the current condition of each item by hovering over it. As an item's durability approaches zero, so does its effectiveness, offering you less protection and doing less damage. The general wear and tear of your gear is also indicated by a sword or shield icon, which will appear to alert you when an equipped item is no longer useful. Replacing or repairing the damaged item will increase its durability, making it serviceable again. You can repair an item by obtaining a repair kit and dragging it on a damaged item. All aspiring adventurers require equipment, and although most things found in-game can be crafted, there are times when purchasing a missing item or reagent is desirable. The various merchants found throughout New Britannia will have a variety of items for sale. To purchase an item, double-click on a merchant to engage the conversation window. Dragging items from the left window to the right adds it to your shopping cart. Holding down the control key while dragging items allows you to pull a single item off a stack. You can also sell items in your inventory by selecting the Sell tab. Once you are ready to complete the transaction, sign on the dotted line to seal the deal. The required gold will be deducted from your character and the purchased items placed in your inventory. Secure trade between players can also be performed by right-clicking and selecting Trade. Only when both players have signed does the trade take place. Housing in Shroud of the Avatar allows players to set up a more permanent base of operations from which to launch activities and conduct business. Houses provide players with a customizable space in which they can store items they acquire throughout their travels. This space can be shared with others and used as a storefront from which to sell goods. To place a house, players must purchase an appropriate sized land deed and house. These items can be purchased from vendors with gold the player has acquired in-game. Once purchased, a player may locate a lot of the appropriate size in any village, town, or city and click the signpost to claim it. Assuming, of course, it hasn't already been claimed. In undeveloped villages, unmarked lot locations can be found by pressing and holding the P key. This produces streams of smoke to indicate the position of lot claiming locations. Once claimed, you'll be able to select a home for placement from a list of available homes you have in your inventory. The overworld map allows for travel between the various villages, towns, cities, and dungeons that can be found in New Britannia. To access the overworld map, players must leave a scene by walking beyond its border. In this view, the W, A, S, D keys control movement. Moving the mouse while pressing and holding the right mouse button rotates the camera, and the mouse wheel controls zoom. 
To enter a scene, a player must move to the corresponding hex and select the Enter button. On this map, your location as well as those of your party can be seen. Lunar rifts are ancient Stonehenge-like structures that provide a means of quick transport to various locations in New Britannia. Each rift you encounter will take you to one or more distinct locations depending on the time of day. Hovering your mouse cursor over the glowing orb within the rift will reveal its current destination. The lunar rift in Owl's Head currently rotates through seven different points of interest, one every 20 seconds. Finally, Shroud of the Avatar includes a rich and vibrant community that actively shape the game world through numerous and varied player-run events. Live plays, tournaments, player-created mazes, contests, and dance parties are just some of the activities you'll find on any given day. To learn about the latest happenings, check out the Release 12 Events book located in your inventory, which can be accessed by hitting the I key. Anyway, that's all the time I have. There's still plenty more to learn and even more to explore. Hopefully this guide gives you a nice high-level overview of the various game mechanics to help you get your adventures started. Until next time, this is the Mad Hermit signing off.